Boundless Grace by Mary Hoffman When Grace gets the opportunity to go to Africa and visit her father and his new family, she feels a little strange. They have the perfect storybook family without Grace. Is there any room for her in their home? However, Nana is right. Families are what you make of them. Let's read to find out how Grace is going to make the most of hers. Today, you will be able to infer characters' feelings. If you'll remember, inferring means we are thinking about what the author is trying to tell us without actually saying it. We have to read between the lines. We're going to infer the characters' feelings and motivations from what they do, which are their actions, and the things that they say, which is their dialogue. First, let's think about some of the vocabulary. Your first word is compound. A compound is a cluster of houses in Africa where members of the same family may live. Your next word is cross. This word means annoyed or angry. Your last word is manage. If you manage something, you cope with it or you deal with it or you handle it. So today we're going to read the book Boundless Grace straight through from the beginning without stopping and then we'll do some activities together at the end. Grace lived with her ma and her nana and a cat called Pawpaw. Next to her family, what Grace liked best was stories. Some she knew and some she made up. She was particularly interested in ones about fathers because she didn't have one. You do too have a father, her ma said when she caught Grace talking that way. I must have told you a hundred times about how we split up and your pa went back to Africa. He has another family now, but he's still your father, even though he doesn't live with us anymore. Well, that wasn't Grace's idea of a father. She wanted one like Beauty's, who brought her roses from the beast's garden in spite of the dangers. Not one she hadn't seen since she was very little, and only knew from letters and photographs. And in her school reading books, Grace saw that all the families had a mother and a father, a boy and a girl, and a dog and a cat. Our family's not right, she told Nana. We need a father and a brother and a dog. Well, said Nana, I'm not sure how Papa would feel about a dog. And what about me? Are there any Nanas in your school books? Grace shook her head. Do I have to go then? Asked Nana. Of course not, Grace said, hugging her. Nana hugged her back. A family with you in it is a real family, she said. Families are what you make them. Then one day, when Grace got home from school, she saw a letter on the table with a crocodile stamp on it. Grace knew that it must be from Papa, but it wasn't Christmas or her birthday. Guess what, Ma said. Your Papa sent the money for two tickets to visit him in Africa for your spring vacation. Nana says she'll go with you if you want. What do you say? But Grace was speechless. She had made up so many fathers for herself, she had forgotten what the real one was like. Grace and Nana left for Africa on a very cold gray day. They arrived in the Gambia in golden sunshine like the hottest summer back home. It had been a long, long trip. Grace barely noticed the strange sights and sounds that greeted her. She was thinking of Papa. I wonder if Papa will still love me, thought Grace. He has other children now, and in stories, it's always the youngest that is the favorite. She held on tightly to Nana. Outside the airport was a man who looked a little like Papa's photo. He swung Grace up in his arms and held her close. Grace buried her nose in his shirt and thought, I do remember. In the car, she started to notice how different everything seemed. There were sheep wandering along the roadside and people selling watermelon under the trees. And when they reached her father's compound, there was the biggest difference of all. A pretty young woman with a little girl and a baby boy came to meet them. Grace said hello, but couldn't manage another word all evening. Everyone thought she was just tired, except Nana. What's the matter, honey? She asked when they went to bed. You've got a father and a brother now, and they even have a dog. But Grace thought, they make a storybook family without me. I'm one girl too many. Besides, it's the wrong ma. The next day, Grace started to get to know Nana and Bakary. 
The children thought it was wonderful to have a big sister all the way from America, and Grace couldn't help liking them too. But she had to feel cross with someone. Grace knew lots of stories about wicked stepmothers, Cinderella, Snow White, Hansel and Gretel, so she decided to be cross with J2. I won't clean the house for her, thought Grace. I won't eat anything she cooks, and I won't let her take me into the forest. J2 made a big dish of savory benachine for lunch, but Grace wouldn't eat any. I'm not hungry, she said. She's probably still getting over the long flight, said J2. When Papa came home from work, he found Grace in the backyard. He sat beside her under the big old jackfruit tree. This is where my grandma used to tell me stories when I was a little boy, he said. Nana tells me stories too, said Grace. Did she ever tell you the one about how your ma and I came to split up? asked Papa. I know that one, said Grace, but I don't want to hear it right now. And she covered up her ears. Papa hugged her. Would you like the one about the Papa who loved his little girl so much he saved up all his money to bring her to visit him? Yes, I'd like that one, said Grace. Okay, but if I tell you that story, will you promise to try to be nice to J2? You're both very important to me, said Papa. Grace thought about it. I'll try, she said. The next day they went to the market. It was much more exciting than shopping at home. Even the money had crocodiles on it. Lots of the women carried their shopping on their head. Then they went to a stall that was like stepping inside a rainbow. There was cloth with crocodiles and elephants on it and cloth with patterns made from pebbles and shells and so many colors. We can choose cloth for Grace's first African dress, said Papa. Grace and Nana spent a long time choosing. No one was in a hurry. The days of Grace's visit flew by. She played in the ocean with her brother and sister, and she told them a bedtime story every night. She told all the stories she knew. Beauty and the Beast, Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin. It was amazing how many stories were about fathers who gave their daughters away. But she didn't tell them any about wicked stepmothers. Sometimes Ma called from home, and her voice made Grace feel homesick. I feel like gum stretched out all thin in a bubble, she told Nana, as if there isn't enough of me to go around. I can't manage two families. What if I burst? Seems to me there is enough of you, Grace, said Nana. Plenty to go around. And remember, families are what you make of them. Soon it was their last evening and there was a big farewell party at the compound. Grace and Nana wore their African clothes, and Grace ate twice as much benachine as everyone else. Now you really might burst, said Nana. On their last morning, Papa took Grace to see some real crocodiles. This is a special holy place, he said. The crocodiles are so tame you can stroke them. Not like the one in Peter Pan, said Grace. No, these are so special. You can make a wish on them, said Papa. Grace closed her eyes and made a wish, but she wouldn't say what it was. Later at the compound, Grace asked Nana, Why aren't there any stories about families like mine that don't live together? Well, at least you've stopped thinking it's your family that's wrong, said Nana. Now, until we get back home and find some books about families like yours, you'll just have to make up a new story of your own. I'll do that, said Grace, and when we're home again, I'll write it down and send it to J2 to read to Nana and Bakery. The whole family came to see them off at the airport. Grace was sorry to say goodbye to her new brother and sister and even to her stepmother, but leaving Papa was the hardest of all. Waiting for their plane, Nana asked Grace if she had thought any more about her story. Yes, but I can't think of the right ending, said Grace, because the story's still going on. How about they lived happily ever after, asked Nana. That's a good one, said Grace. Or they lived happily ever after, though not all in the same place? 
Stories are what you make of them, said Nana. Just like families, said Grace. So now that we've finished reading, I want to retell the major elements of the story. And first, I'm going to orally rehearse or practice my thinking by using my fingers to retell the story. I want you to hold up your hand with me. And we're going to retell the story by discussing the five major elements. If you'll remember, the thumb is the characters, your pointer finger is the setting, middle finger is the problem, ring finger are the events from the story, and then your pinky finger is the solution, which is how the problem is solved. So the first question is, who are the main characters? You've got Grace, you've got Ma, you have... Paul, and then you have Nana. Now I want you to think about the other four elements in a five finger retail. The setting, the problem, the events, and the solution, which is how that problem is solved. You can retell the story to yourself or you can tell it to someone nearby. So let's check and see how you did. What's the setting? The setting is Africa. What is the main problem? Grace wants a storybook family. What are the important events? Grace goes to visit her father in Africa. She feels like they have a perfect family without her. Her father reassures her that she is equally important to their family. And finally, Grace comes to realize that her family is great just as it is. So your final assignment today, you're going to do a writing activity. I want you to use the five finger retail chart and write a paragraph retelling the story from Boundless Grace. You need to use transitional words as you write like first, next, then, after that, and finally. You're gonna write your paragraph on a piece of notebook paper, and when you're finished, ask an adult to snap a photo and send it to me on Dojo. As you're writing, I want you to remember everything that we have worked on this year as far as paragraph writing goes. You need capital letters at the beginning of your sentences. You need punctuation at the end of your sentences. Um, you need to skip lines. A paragraph is three to five sentences or more. So with a retail, you're going to have probably between five to seven or more sentences. When you write a paragraph, they are not just a list of sentences down the page. They have to, um, a sentence starts where the sentence before it ends. Um, make sure you indent the first line of your paragraph. If you have any questions on what you need to do, have your parents or an adult send me a message on Dojo, but use what you know that we have already worked on, on class in class to help you write this paragraph. Good luck.